Good morning and welcome on this celebration of the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Again, I remind you that we had some difficulty on Sunday morning with our internet connection, but all seems to be well now. So enjoy this worship service as we gather in Christ's name. And as we do that, we bring ourselves before our God with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gifts of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you Praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy. 
be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Once again, welcome a little late to this morning's service. A few things to be aware of this evening is the last Sunday of the month. So we will gather for drive-in communion. That happens at six o'clock. So get here a little bit before and find your space, tune in your radio to the service and enjoy God's sacrament. Also this evening, as you come, bring those things from God's work, our hands, that you have created over this last month so we can gather those together. And if you have young people who are in Sunday school, Betsy has some packages for each of your families that have the supplies necessary for those classes during the month of October. I think that may be all the announcements. Just to remind you about God's work, our hands, and the things that you ought to bring this evening, take another look at that video. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 18, <clears throat> verses 1 through 4 and 25 through 32. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten our sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, 
The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. Word of God, Word of Life. salvation in you have I trusted all the day long remember O oh Lord your compassion and love for they are from everlasting remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. You are gracious and upright, O oh Lord. Therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. The second reading this Sunday is from the second chapter of Philippians. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility. Regard others better than yourselves. Let each of you not look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited but emptying himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, 
so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both at, to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we're afraid of the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Much like you, we get a lot of catalogs at home, and many of them have novelty t-shirts in them. You know the kinds, the ripped offs of I Heart New York. Things like I Heart My Dachshund, or I Heart Bob, or I Heart Marty Luther. One caught my eye in a recent catalog. It said, I Heart My Attitude Problem. Now that one made me smile as I instantly started making a mental checklist of those who needed their own personal copy of that t-shirt. Probably I'd even get one for myself. It's probably somewhat true for all of us, I think. We can get caught up in a bad attitude. We occasionally enjoy it, getting as much mileage out of it as we can. The occasional bad attitude is pretty endemic among human beings. So what do you think? Jesus asks. A man has two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in my vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? What do you think? Well, I think both of these boys have an attitude problem, and they both deserve a t-shirt. Neither of them gets to be son of the year. 
And maybe that's the point of the parable. When it comes to responding to God, none of us gets it perfectly right all the time. We all fall short. The second son is probably the one that we most readily can relate to. This son is only willing to please the father. He's polite, calling his dad, sir. He's agreeable and he commits himself to doing what is asked of him. The only problem is he doesn't do it. Now Jesus offered no explanation, but perhaps you can fill in that explanation from your own life story. What are the reasons we find for not doing what God asks of us? Are we too busy? We know that Jesus asks us to take up our cross and commit our time and our talents and our material goods. But other things come up and our commitment to Jesus seems to take a back seat. Worship is important to be sure, but when do the Cowboys play? I know I should serve on a committee or a council or read during the worship, but I've done that before and I should give somebody else the opportunity. You know, I travel too much. Others are more qualified at that than I am. I'm sure I won't be missed. Does any of that sound familiar? The other son's not much better though. He is surly and abrupt with his father and he seems to have missed the catechism, catechism lesson about the fourth commandment. Yet there is a difference because he does change his mind and he goes out to work. It's not the best of responses, but at least he gets it together in the end. But there is another kind of attitude, one that we don't see in either son, but one that Jesus would like us to see. It's expressed in today's second lesson. Have this mind among yourselves, which you have in Christ Jesus. That word mine in the Greek could also be translated as attitude. Paul then goes on to describe this attitude. It's one that causes one to humble themselves, to be concerned more for others than for the self. It's one that pours out oneself for others, one who empties himself. That's quite a different attitude from the boys in the parable, maybe even different from our own attitude. Being a, serv a servant, being obedient, emptying oneself. Those could be foreign concepts to us who like to be in charge of our lives, masters of our fate, captains of our own ship. Paul points out that obtaining this new kind of attitude comes about in the same way it came for Jesus, by paradoxically emptying oneself. Our needs are best met when we think not so much about ourselves as we do for others. What do you think? Jesus asks. Well, I think the real miracle here is that somehow the selfishness and self-centeredness that resides in me gets transformed into something else. That's what happened with son number one. He wouldn't go out into the vineyard, but something got a hold of him and changed his mind. Dare we call that something grace? Can we call it anything but grace? Can anything but grace change us from being turned in on ourselves, which is how Luther described the state of sinfulness, to having the mind and the attitude of Christ? Paul speaks in Philippians by talking about encouragement in Christ and the incentive of love. Those are the ways that grace work in us through encouragement and love. Then as Jesus begins to work in us, he begins to work through us as well. He gently and simply 
shows us how to have His attitude, how to treat others with humility, how to serve others by emptying ourselves. He begins to transform us, making us into His own likeness, despite our grumbling, our resisting, our self-assertion, He molds us. Christ says to us, okay, I know how things look to you, but how about looking at it from my perspective for a while? Maybe your ideas will change. Maybe your attitude will change. Maybe instead of looking at yourself and your needs, you can look at others and their needs. Maybe instead of saying, no, I can't, you'll reconsider. The remarkable thing is, is that the littlest contribution that we can make does such marvelous things with God. Paul says God is at work in you, and at work not just encouraging, but turning that trickle of work on our part into a flood of good for Christ's sake. There's the old story of the mother who wanted to encourage her son in the progress of his piano playing. So she bought tickets to see Paderewski at Carnegie Hall. That night they found their spots, front and center, just beneath that majestic Steinway piano on the stage. The mother got involved in her conversation with the person next to her and lost track of her son. Only at eight o'clock, as the house lights dimmed, did she notice that the boy was sitting on the piano bench, innocently plucking out twinkle, twinkle little star. The mother gasped and rose to get the boy when Paderewski himself walked out on stage. He slipped onto the bench beside the boy and whispered in his ear, don't quit, keep playing. And with his left hand, he began to improvise a bass line. And then he reached around the boy, encircling him, and played a running counterpoint with his right. Together, the old master and the young novice held the crowd mesmerized. In our lives, as unpolished as we may be, sometimes as reluctant as we may be, perhaps as discouraged as we may be. It is the master who surrounds us and whispers in our ear, don't quit, keep playing. And as we do, he augments and supplements until a work of amazing beauty is created. He takes what little we have to offer and uses it to change our way of thinking, to change our attitude, our way of doing, to form us after himself. What do you think? Well, I think that the master, to have a master like that, that all the bad attitudes in the world and in my heart don't have much of a chance. Amen.
join me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. For the life of the world, give your church unity. Inspire all the baptized with the mind of Christ. Where the church is powerful, let us speak and act boldly. And where it struggles, shape us with humility and obedience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life of the world, preserve and keep your creation, O God. Grant renewal, relief, and hope to all dealing with wildfires, storms, earthquake. Mend and redeem places that are polluted and damaged, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life of the world, turn the nations toward life. Where our ways are unfair, give us new hearts and new spirits where sin permeates our cultures with prejudice, bias, and our institutions with injustice and inequality, transform our minds and teach us to trust your authority. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life of the world, our lives are yours, O God. Relieve the suffering of those who are ill in body, mind, or spirit especially Marie, Eleanor, Bill, Bob, Norma, George, Gail, Marianne, Elizabeth, Karen, Cindy, Dustin, Inga, Kim, Janine, Julie, Donna, Gertrude, Steve, Becky, Amy, and Steve. 
grant peace and comfort to Ardis after the death of her sister. Defend the lives and welfare of refugees. Give us generous hearts to give how and when we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life of the world, we each now offer our own prayers for those dear to us and specific situations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the life of the world, turn this congregation away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Fill us with your compassion and sympathy. Bless ministries of care in our community, especially God's work, our hands projects and activities, culminating tonight at Drive-In Communion. Make us into signs of your mercy and justice for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus took on every aspect of life on earth, even to death. Thank you for those who have gone into the kingdom ahead of us, tax collectors and prostitutes, likely and unlikely, friend and foe. By their witness, Teach us to confess Jesus Christ as Lord in life and in death. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. you. Let us share this peace one with another.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We thank you, O God, for your life-giving word, for calling creation into being, declaring forgiveness from the cross, and delivering the spirit of rebirth. We, we praise you, O God, God, for your word. Your word is a lamp lighting our path, a mirror reflecting ourselves, a shield providing us refuge, a fire burning for justice and truth. Your word is sweeter than honey. It nourishes our bodies like milk. It sustains your people like bread. We receive your promises more treasured than gold. We, we bless, bless you, O God, God, for your word. Open our ears to your prophets, apostles, and saints, and to all the cries of the needy. Breathe into your church the mighty spirit of Christ, that heeding your voice of beauty and power, we are strengthened to serve wherever we are called. To you, you Father, Father, Son, and Spirit, the source, word, word and the breath, breath we, we offer our thanks for your life-giving life word. word. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Amen. Spirit helper. 
Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.